sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the sampling techniques we can use to find distribution abundance of species. What we'll do in this video is we'll cover the next dot point, which is all about energy and what we need energy for. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify uses of energy by living organisms. And before I start, I'll quickly go over that verb identify. Identify just means we have to name. So name some of the uses of energy by living organisms. And I'll also go over that word organisms. So generally, first thing you think about, you know, what do we use energy in everyday life? So we use energy to watch our favorite television shows. We watch, uh, we need energy to make food. So it's the extra stove and the energy. We need energy to light our houses. We need energy to cool food. So for example, if we have no energy, we would not be able to have ice cream. And we need energy to charge all of our appliances. So iPhones, our computers, everything else. So our energy that gets used, so the way we use it, is these ways. And this will be the electrical energy we get from our electrical plugs. But this is asking how do we living organisms. So what is an organism? Any living thing is an organism. So any living thing, which could be a bacteria, it could be a animal, it could be a plant. Right? So when we're talking about the uses of energy, we're not just talking about we ourselves, but all living things. And obviously we're not talking about televisions or ice cream, but what happens in our body that requires energy. But in our body for bacteria, animals, plants, all kinds of animals, all kinds of living organisms, organisms just any living thing. So I'll start. So there's five main reasons what we need energy for. The first one is cell repair and maintenance. Now you'll learn soon that all of our body and most basically any living thing is made of cells. So all living organisms have cells that make up their function. Now we need to repair and we need to maintain these cells. You can imagine a cell to be like a house. Now you have lots of appliances on every day that all require energy and stuff will break down so we need to have energy to repair that as well. So cell repair and maintenance require lots of energy. That's one of the reasons why we need energy. Another reason is cell growth and division. So you can say growth as well, that gets your point, but cell growth just means that these cells here they might start out sort of smallish, but then they can grow in size. That requires energy, so growing requires energy. But also dividing, and you'll learn soon that cells actually divide and make new ones. But you can make, and this is actually a picture of that. So you can see here we have one cell, and that starts dividing into two cells. It starts dividing here, and then eventually it's two cells. But you can imagine that will require lots of energy, dividing into different cells. So cell growth and division, this requires energy as well. And this happens, I mean, we have, we have billions of cells in our body, and many of them have to re be replaced every day. So we do this on a daily basis, not just once or twice, but millions and millions of times, and it requires energy as well. Another one is the production of organic molecules. What I mean by organic molecules, especially in our body, are things like DNA and RNA. And you'll soon learn that DNA and RNA is really important when it comes to, this is more or less the instruction manual for our cells. So this is the brain or the instruction manual of our cells. Without DNA and RNA, we wouldn't be alive. We wouldn't be living. So we need to have energy to actually make DNA and RNA. We need energy to make lipids as well. These are all organic molecules. And obviously lipids are things like fats. And we need fats to make energy, but also to make, for example, our cell membrane. So here, I'm going to go over this for a different reason, but here's our cell membrane. And you can see all of these orangey dots are all lipids and we need them for our cell membranes and other things, right? So lipids are important for energy, but also for cell structure. Now, proteins are also organic molecules. We need, to, we need to make these for things like our, our actual muscle cells, or, or I mean, 20% or quite a bit of our body is made out of protein. So without proteins, we would not be alive. And glycogen, this is the storage form of energy, so of glucose. So if you have too much glucose, we store it as glycogen. And we need to have storage, obviously, in case we run out. But all of these require some energy to make. So we use some energy to make all of these. And next is obviously movement. So movement should be a straightforward one. We have lots of muscles in our body. And these muscles move constantly. I mean, we obviously walk around, but we, but we also just generally move. And every single movement requires energy. So to be able to move requires energy. And last, so this is the fourth one, was movement. 
And last but not least, there's, there's a couple more, but these are the main important ones, is transport. So there's something called active transport, which means we use energy to make that happen. There's also passive, but not, not every single part of a transport system requires energy, but parts of it do. And this active transport uses energy. And sometimes we have to get certain substances into cells or out of cells that would usually not go in and out, so, but we use energy to make that happen. So for example, if this is here, it's outside the cell here, and this is inside the cell, this is our cell membrane in between outside and inside. And if we want to get something from here to there, but it wouldn't go by itself, we will need to use energy to pump it across. And that core requires yeah energy. So and that's active transport. So these were five of the main so it says the dot point says identify uses of energy by living organisms. And these were five important ones. So identify just means you need to name them. But it's good to understand them as well. But the first one was cell repair and maintenance. We need to keep our cells going. And we, our body is made up of millions of cells. And all living organisms, so living organisms or anything that was living, all living organisms are made up of cells. And you learn about that soon as well. But we need to keep them going and that requires energy. Cell growth and division. We need to make new cells on a daily basis, millions of them. And that requires energy as well. We need to produce organic molecules such as DNA, RNA, lipids, proteins, and glycogen, and all of that uses energy. We need to move, so just walking around, just generally moving our muscles, even when we're just sitting and just doing anything, that requires energy, so movement requires energy. And transport, especially the active transport type, when we're getting stuff across which would usually not go, but we're using energy to make that happen. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.